<laughs> What's up? It's the K50 Cent. What's the talk in New York? Tom the Ayo. It's your man Lloyd Bank. The young Buck. So I'm a KK. That nigga eyes and mother. Snoop did that. Did you see talk. how that nigga Snoop hey, did that too? Play, you ever play his <laughs> last one and then play the one. That nigga went for Hey, it's a homie KK. Hey, it's the homie KK. It's the homie KK. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pimps and players. Yes, sir. Of all ages, sizes, and colors, it's the one and only Nemo Holes, a.k.a. Finding Nemo. And we inside the GGN. And I got some real motherfucking special guests today. Some of my real player partners. 50 Cent in the motherfucking G Unit in the house. Yo. G Unit. Damn, I love saying that shit. <laughs> What's up, really fellas? Good. Oh, so good. What's good, man? Put it back together. I see that, Fifty. You a bad motherfucker for, for taking the time and orchestrating and giving the people what they wanted. Did the people force you to do this, or you just felt like you had to do it? Well, the timing was right. I mean, after I experienced what I went through, yeah. Like when he started talking crazy, I was like, okay, if I can deal with him, <laughs> then I can bring everybody back. To, you know what I mean? And based, based on, he, he didn't react by saying anything. Because mm -hmm. when he's uncomfortable, he just stopped talking, like, period. You just quiet down, but overall it's been it's been good, man. Like you know, I I think in the very beginning, cause you know, we come into the game with that concept that you're as strong as the crew you build, mm -hmm. and you know I put a lot of time and energy into making sure everybody else's situation was comfortable, cause I I don't think players can win consecutive championship games if they ain't eating. Sure indeed. Yeah. You know, it's a hunger thing. It's a such thing as if you're not eating, you become hungry again, and sometimes. You have to allow the players to stand on their own two feet, which you gave them all the lane. But at a certain point in time, it's like your career going to continue to phew, and then it's up to them to try to catch up to you. And then it's not going to be fair. Like, y'all may be at one point where all y'all on the same level, but then again, you 50, you the one who kicked the door open. It's the same shit I went through with my crew yeah. because everybody around them feel like, well, nigga, why you ain't getting the same thing dog getting? Because, nigga, you not dog. <laughs> Yeah, Period. Yeah. It is what it is. I was dog before I put you in the game. Yeah, I always say mm -hmm. I, I would be if if Ye or, or or Banks would have been Fifty Cent, it would have worked a lot different because I would have just been able to be involved with the the business aspect of things. And you wouldn't have to be the the personal and the, the psychological because people don't understand. There's a lot of shit behind the scenes that go on with this. When you the leader or when you yeah. the one up front, you have to be a counselor. You got to be a, a preacher, a psychologist. You got to be all this shit because. Motherfuckers depend on you. Yeah. And you can't be like, oh, I ain't fucking with you today, nigga. You gotta open your heart up, your ears, and put your family on pause or whatever mm -hmm. you're doing to make sure you're taking care of the crew. You ain't lying. And, and it's, it's a, like, at points, if you ever going through something emotional on your own, there's no, uh, there's no break. There's a, there's a uh, I say depression is a luxury I can't afford. What? Mm. I mean, I said that. What? I said, when, like, when they get, going through their things or whatever it is and they have those feelings. I said, well, when I get a chance to do that? Because I can't afford that luxury, it's too expensive. <coughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like depression, I, I just work through whatever's happening at the time. So like, just keep, get back at it and do something. And then when something positive breaks, it goes, okay, they go the ray of light we was looking for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey, but what, what, what do y'all miss the most about what it used to be? You know, when I say what it used to be, I'm speaking on when, when we was out there on the road and motherfucking hip hop was what it was. What do y'all miss about that? Well, I miss is how, how important authenticity was. Mm -hmm. You know, like, when I fell in love mm -hmm. with it, like, it's like your record, the, the, the first album, Doggy Style, and then, like, when just the other artists that I saw ahead of that, I watched, and it, it was so important that you have your own style, your own energy connected to those actual records. And we see some of those same vibes and, and things come out in the decisions you make now creatively. So we see that it was your actual influence. It wasn't That's something right. that was given to you. And then, like, a lot of the artists that what, what I find now is in our culture, they things are trending. Yeah. So they're following what, what the last person just did. Everybody in music do this. Yeah, offering something new. It's the same exact thing. <laughs> if right. your shit don't do this, you ain't hot. Yeah, there you go. It's like this. Right. I got a whole right. album. That motherfucker don't do right. none of this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel something. If you play a new joint, they be like, I feel something, but it's not making me do this. <laughs> like, what the fuck? When did music have to be on one groove line? Yeah. Like, I hear what you're saying. Like, that what was so dope about it. Like, when I used to listen to hip hop in the 80s, the niggas from the East Coast all was different. 
Yeah. Like the niggas from Queens didn't sound like the niggas from uh, the niggas that was from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. niggas from Bronx, the niggas, them niggas, none of them niggas sounded alike, but they all was from New York. Yeah. Now, every nigga in the rap game sound like they from down south. Yeah, same thing. Look, they be in New York, yeah. and they, they, they'll come out and it'll be drill music. Well, it'll be like, yeah. it'll sound like Chicago music or right. different things, like, they, cause they just We following, following. Yeah, yeah, when we used to be trend setting, and I say that, which with, with a lot of respect, because I remember when the south didn't get no respect. I remember when niggas used to dog the South. I was one of those niggas in the rap game when the West had just finally got our foot in and niggas was like, okay, y'all niggas is cool, but fuck them niggas. And niggas like, hold on, them our cousins though. Man, fuck them country bunking ass niggas. Like niggas used to come at them like that. The rap game go from hand to hand. It was created in, in the East. The East held it for as long as they could. When that shit spread, it's a seed. When you plant a seed, it's gonna grow. So it grew and it spread to other parts of the world. When we got a hold of it, we held it for as long as we could. Then the niggas from the Midwest started sneaking in. Then the motherfucker from the South, when they grabbed it, they got it now. So as the West and the East, it's our job to stay true to what we do. We can't jump on the bandwagon. And follow everything else. We gotta still be who we is. Even if the record sales don't depict that, because that ain't what it's about. I would rather not have a million record sales and have my credibility as far as being right. a real nigga for what I do instead of getting a record, record sale based off me following a nigga and three years from now I can't perform that song because it ain't hot no more. Yeah, you're right. right. You know what happened? Not even three years, three right. weeks. Some of these niggas ain't even last for three weeks, my nigga. Right now all you need is a good record and a cold hashtag, nigga. You know <laughs> Straight up, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's always going to be something new. When, when a person decides to be themselves, they offer something no one else can be. Yeah, because once you be you, who, who can be you but you? All right. That's what's wrong right now. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Amigos, but all them niggas sound the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, nigga had me in the studio one night trying to do that shit. I'm like, man, cut this shit off. What the fuck am I in here doing, nigga? I don't rap like that. He said, what the fuck you got me doing? This shit, it's addictive. This shit'll get you. You hear that shit everywhere, man. We're supposed to provoke emotion. That's what entertaining is. Like, to, whether you love it or you hate it, or you, as long as you feel some kind of way about it, we've entertained you. Like, I think when I listen to the records and Ain't nothing there, nothing special going on in the joint. I just go, okay, yeah, and move to the next one. Sometimes I see them, they're saying cool, cool stuff in the records, but I'm looking and I'm confused, going, which one of them's telling the truth? Yeah. Uh -huh. There's What's so a many of, of them. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of that. <laughs> but you can't, you can't knock them, yeah. though, man. They fascinated by what they see. We was fascinated by movies when yeah. we was young. And right they now, fascinated yeah. by the music. So it's, just, it's all creativity and it's all entertainment. So it is what it is. The movies shape me into who I am, mm -hmm. watching the Mac. You know what I'm saying? Watching Goldie mack a bitch up and break a bitch as soon as he hit the streets. You know what I'm saying? That was some of the coldest shit I ever seen on how to talk to a woman. Like, that was always the key to me. I like women, so I want to be able to talk to them. You know, that's the key. What about you, little homie? What you like? You like women, right? Hey, we got him. He like it. We right now. I want to fuck with him now. Let me, let me ask you a question. The nigga tried to warn you, but he just said, but you sit down, man. He told you, man. I had to set him up. I had to let that shit set Wake him up. I'm glad you woke him up. You feel me? I'm good. I'm good, though, man. But for real, though, I'm just, you know, happy to be here, man. You sound like you're from New Orleans. I am from New Orleans. Yeah. What you know about when I was on No Limit Records? You know about that? You know I was going to bring that up. Oh, well, come on there. You heard me? For that respect. You heard me? Come on now. Fuck man, with y'all. Yes, sir. For real, we love you, man. Spelling the song you did with Soldier Slim. Yeah. Rest mm -hmm. in peace to yeah. Slim. See, the South you niggas did. took care of me, right? Yeah. When I left Death Row Records, I was in a little bit of limbo because, you know, niggas from there didn't really like me too right. much. And I had to try to figure yeah. out how to get back on my feet. Master uh -huh. P was a real nigga that put his loving Straight arms up. around me yeah. and showed Straight me up. business. I knew the creative side, but he showed me business. If it wasn't for No Limit, it wouldn't be no money in rap. And mm. motherfuckers can look at me like they crazy right now. But nigga, it was no money in rap until Master P came out. Nigga, I was on Death Row Records. We made more money than any of you niggas, all you rap labels. <laughs> nigga, Suge had all the money. He gave us a little bit. But nigga, when Master <laughs> P came out, nigga, when Master P came out, nigga, everybody on No Limit had money. We had money, guns, cars, everything. Thank you, Master P. <laughs> Shout out to P, man. <laughs> For real. Hey, Banks, I want to ask you, when you was, doing those hot records, because I heard you on a couple of hot records before getting back with G-Unit. Mm -hmm. 
How did that make you feel to still be respected and have your love without disrespect? Like you didn't have to diss nobody. You just made hot music and motherfuckers respected you and loved you. How did that make you feel? Nah, it meant a lot. Like going back to what you said and what he said, I, I came up on everybody being original. And um, thanks to artists like yourself, you know, just watching you be calm and be who you are. And that's who I always was. So I never felt the need to be extra animated if I wasn't or, you know, just I felt the comfortability to be who I was. You know, a lot of, a lot of folks, folks don't know, you know, Snoop is a big part of why, uh, of me, uh, this right here, me being coming back, back, with back being back with the unit. What you happened? Know? I'm gonna let you know what happened. <laughs> Unc, fly, Unc come to Cashville, Unc come to my home city, and I had to come see him, you feel me? Get over here. The last thing he told me was get your shit right, man. Get your shit right with Phil, you understand? And that's what I did, and I told him. I said, next time you see me, I'm gonna be right here where I need to be. I'm gonna yes, be sir. on top. Yes, and it's the, it's, it feel good to sit here and know that I use what you told me. I told you, I said, man, I'm gonna listen. 50 a good nigga, man, and niggas need to know that, yeah. see. We always look at how 50 be acting a fool on Instagram and clowning. You know what I'm saying? You be doing your thing, you be acting a motherfucking fool, but beneath all of that is a real, genuine nigga who really love his niggas and take care of motherfuckers. That's for real. And see, you gotta respect that. That's what overwhelms everything. That's why I always go to war for 50. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas know I go to war yeah. for this nigga right Every here. Every single time, like, even when we did, like, in the beginning, the first, the first record that I did, the first real feature was the P.I.P. remix. Because everything else, everyone else was in house. It was M, it was the, uh, that's the only video, music video we shot off of Get Rich or Die Trying that wasn't already recorded as that, that that's song on the album. beginning. Because the only thing that I had that was missing from the record was Snoop. We had Nate, we had On 21 Questions, we had Dre, yeah. like everything was there and, and I was fixing it with that. You know what I'm saying? That but motherfucker the, was classic. The video, the performance, the all that shit. Yeah. That shit. Them pimps love you today, to this day. <laughs> <laughs> you you gave a lot of them pimps five years to they pimping. Like you had it. Some of them niggas was finna retire. They was like, oh, oh no, no I'm, I'm back, I baby. Got five more years of this shit. <laughs> Hi, my name is Stormy Friends. I will be your broadcaster today for El Paso, Texas. It will be extremely hot, triple digits and be sure to rub that tan lotion in very well. If you need a demonstration, I'll be more than welcome to show you. So for the ladies, be sure when you're sunbathing to take off all uh, ties, including the back. I'm not gonna do it, but. And then the, um, all right here. Make sure you put it all over your back. Make sure not to miss a spot. And your leg. In between because it's a very sensitive area over here. So what y'all working on music? Well, we we put out the the Beauty EP was, was last night. Yeah. Beauty oh, last night it came out. Yeah. It's the number one. It's number one right now. Okay, number make sure y'all go get that, man. I'm, I'm gonna go get it right now, my motherfucking self. What I'm tell you to go get it, nigga. I ain't got it. What kind of nigga is I? Make sure you get that the EP. I buy nigga shit when I'm on the show. You know that, right? That's real shit. Yeah, I'm gonna go buy this motherfucker right now. I don't play. What is it called? The Beauty. The Beauty of Independence. Okay, well you niggas said that shit like a boy band group. <laughs> <laughs> the Beauty of Independence. We've been doing drops. We've been doing drops. You niggas been niggas doing, doing drops so low. <laughs> niggas doing drops so low, niggas sound like. <laughs> That's when you know niggas been on radio runs all week. The Beauty of Independence. <laughs> Should I get the clean version or the dirty version? The dirty version. Well, I, what about when I'm playing it for kids? All right, fuck oh, it. They, they didn't heard that shit before. We're going to get the dirty version. So <laughs> says 50. So says 5 will get the dirty version. What about version. the DPG unit? That's what we need to be working on. Shit, what's That's the what hold we need up? to be working on. Yeah. Hey, ain't no hold up. Okay. Me and 50 already had the conversation. We were just yeah. waiting to put y'all in. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that is deep. But the bosses had already spoke. We just need the soldiers to go to war. Hell yeah. Yeah, we just get in and do something. Mix it up. So, yeah, yo, what's up with you, nephew? Anything good, man. Just know the CP is out, happy about that. Just happy to see the team back together. 
Yeah, you know, cause I see, remember, you the you the G of the crew, so yeah. Now nah, I remember the beginning. I remember like coming from one three four and got brew, and then coming out of jail and having a condo on twenty fifth street. Yeah, cause niggas was promoting yeah. shit out you when you was Definitely. in jail, nigga. I didn't even free, know you, nigga. Yeah. I was free yayo. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, See, who yeah. is this nigga? Free nigga, free yayo, yeah, yayo, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, nigga. Yeah, that definitely. nigga had you in magazines, t-shirts. Nigga had everybody definitely, wearing your man. shit. Definitely. So you know, it just feels good to be back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I remember the beginning, like, like first coming to Cali, coming in the studio with Dre. He pull out the jar, the guito. <laughs> open. Like, what the fuck? You know when niggas playing beats. You know yeah. you coming in there. Yeah. Busta, all kinds of people coming in the studio. Just it was just that crazy. All love, like, right? Yeah, that was all just, love, though, right? Yeah. All love. It was always crazy. It was crazy for me, like. And nobody looked at nobody like nobody was little. Everybody definitely. was even. We and I was on the run that even. whole time. That was crazy for me too. I was on the run that whole time. You and a nigga that I had, with me. I ain't gonna say his name, but they called <laughs> him. <laughs> this nigga was with me. I'm, I got the nigga in my studio. Nigga, America's Most Wanted. Come on, this nigga's on there. Damn. I'm like, oh, cuz you got to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got to get <laughs> your ass up out of here, nigga. You gonna get us all cracked, nigga? Bye, nigga. See you. <laughs> And if you've seen this suspect, give us a call at 1-800-America's Most Wanted. I got the 1-800 in already, nigga. Get your ass out of here. Before you fuck us all up. Get your ass out of here, nigga. Anonymous call, yeah. This is a nigga that look like the nigga y'all just showed. Is y'all going to do a G-Unit movie? We're going to do something. We're going to do something. Like, I, I don't know if I'll if I make it. Huh? That's the first time I heard that. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, you got this nigga right here that been in movies with Robert De Niro. Yeah. He can't, it can get anybody. This is one nigga that I know that can get anybody <laughs> in Hollywood. I don't know how the fuck you do it, 50, but I done seen you in movies with some of the motherfucking greatest actors in the world. I'm like, how the fuck this nigga get Robert De Niro? This nigga turn around and do another movie with Bruce Willis, and he got, I'm like, cut this nigga, how is he connected with all these motherfuckers? I mean, what's going on? But with that Forrest Whitaker project, though, when, when I did perform with Forrest and, and De Niro, after that, I've been like, I ain't been in no room where I was intimidated. They that was, was the biggest niggas in yeah. the game. I did, I did Righteous Kill with Pacino and De Niro, and then... This nigga been in the movie. This nigga been in the movie with Tony Montana. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> the nigga from Casino. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker, like blacker than Forrest Whitaker neck. This nigga done been in the movie. I only been in the movie with Denzel Washington. That's tough. Hello. Hell yeah. yeah it's not to mention. Yeah, I mean, I mean. I need one of those. <laughs> That's yeah. tough. I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean. a, I'm a call him <laughs> when we get over here. <laughs> right away, I'm like, I don't give a fuck what it is. And this nigga gonna make it happen, watch. It man, where Pimp and Curly at, man? Fuck all this shit he talking about, man. Where that nigga at, man? Yeah. Yeah, he said a motherfucker down south calling me Curly. Can you believe this shit? After all I done for these motherfuckers. Yeah. Officer motherfucking Ricky. Nigga, when I catch you, I'm gonna cut you, nigga. Pippin Curly was on the edge, nigga. That nigga was cold with that gold curl, nigga. <laughs> that shit came from, what's the name? One, one of them called me Curly. And then uh, Foxy told me I had 24 hours to, to retract the statement or else. Motherfucking bitch Foxy Brown gonna tell me I got 24 motherfucking hours to retract the statement. That hoe done lost her motherfucking mind. She don't know this is Pippin. <laughs> That's what created that. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? He said, she said you got 24 hours to retract your statement or bitch. else. <laughs> or, or else. <laughs> Inside the Smoker Studio, feel free to, uh, you know, answer to the best of your ability. Everyday people, AKA real nigga shit. I'm gonna ask each one of y'all a question and then that way y'all can all get an answer in. Okay. 50 Cent, what's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up in the morning? I, well, I, I'm usually thinking, where am, I, where am I at? Like, what? Because if we touring or we somewhere else, like, I look around and say, oh, who is this bitch that's with me? <laughs> <laughs> that nigga said the first thing he do, who is this bitch that's with me? <laughs> hey, but come say we got to be downstairs in the lobby in five minutes so I can get this hole up, my bro. <laughs> Hey, 50, we got to be in the lobby in five yeah. minutes. But listen, look, you see how he brought that right out? The, it's because he did that, man. Yeah, Come on, right. nigga. Come on, nigga, we know the rules of the game. Help yeah. me, nigga. Help me, help you, help, help us. Hell yeah. Shit, get this bitch out of here. <laughs> Nephew, what's your favorite sports team? The Saints. New Orleans? Yeah, man, you already know. Yeah, he stayed. Boy, y'all done put the Straight for the whole team, man. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of chronic? 
I would say, I would say, when I went to Amsterdam, it was something I smoked called Hawaiian snow. Mm. That was crazy for me. In the red light district, you know, you been there, you know, you know, you know. Yes, sir. That shit right there look like it got you fucked up. Yeah, right it do got me fucked up. Like, right? <laughs> shit slow motion. What's your favorite pair of shoes all time? Come on, nigga, thank. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a hard. Pair of shoes, like, yeah, I know yeah. that's hard because these niggas be like, do I'm I want to go with a stylish look or do I go with a sneaker look or a boot? Pop, <laughs> I was a shoe like a sneaker nigga when I was young, but I'm more like a Timberland. Nigga, shit, but I'm shit, saying bro. all time, like if you had just one shoe, like the nigga, it's the greatest shoe I ever had on that made me look the coldest. The 12s. 12? Jordan? Yeah. Right. Jordan 12s? Yeah. Mm. I, I, out of Jordans, I like the 5s, though. The 5s, though. They got the shit. But then, uh, and so many other cool shit, like, pick, I don't think it's my favorite. I like the Stan Smith. That's yeah. why we created Yeah, Stan Smith is hard. The original. Yeah. Buckets on you. Megan Good or <laughs> Taraji P. Henson. That's Yvette from Baby Boy. Taraji. <laughs> and I, I, I only say that. Why? Because you seen a new movie with her. Yeah, that, but I, I, I Megan, Megan, I, I'm saying that they, they gave you one night and said, Young Buck, I don't care what my life is based on, tonight it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> tonight Jeez. is your night. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna try to take I'm gonna try to take them both down. Yeah, that's what a gangster would say. Me? I'm gonna try to go for both, but if I got to pick one, <laughs> I'm gonna ride with Tara. But if they come like that, I got to I got to try two. You know, but yeah, shit. Taraji, Taraji P? I like Taraji. Yeah, I let dead. Megan Good live. This shit called Finish the Sentence 50. I'm gonna ask you these questions. I'm gonna start them and you finish it. Okay. I always wake up thinking about money. If I could work with anybody dead or alive, I'd want to work with Tupac. If I could see anybody dead or alive perform, I'd want to see Michael Jackson. <laughs> Straight up, right? Yeah. I look for blank in a woman. I, I was looking for something different, so I walked in here, Snoop, and he said, "Shorty, the blue." <laughs> I said, "What I did?" He's a real pimp. Don't let the song fool you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fifty Cent, and I'm a drug dealer, but I do it. <laughs> but I do shit. <laughs> <laughs> And there you have it, the one and only 50 Cent. Yes, sir, Mr. Jackson to you bitches. You understand me? And the homies from the G-Unit, we yeah. all up in here. They doing their thing, man. G-Unit is back together again. Thank y'all for watching the GGN, and we up out of this bitch. Tune in next week, same dog channel, same dog time. You funky bitch, you. Yeah. <laughs> Church, preach, tabernacle.